By the end of this video, you're gonna have a dashboard just like this one inside your Obsidian Vault. Although there are no prerequisites for this video, I'll be assuming you're not just starting out with Obsidian. But if you are, then it might be best to go over some of my Obsidian playlists before watching this one. This dashboard is made possible by a CSS snippet called Dashboard++ that I'm going to link to in the description below. This was made by an active member of the community that goes by the username TFT Hacker. In this video, we're going to be installing his CSS snippet into our Obsidian Vault, but don't worry, you don't need to know anything about CSS to make this work. All you need is a simple text editor. So let's get started. All right, so here we are back at our vault. And the first thing we're going to do is to come here to Settings, Appearance, and over here at the bottom, you're going to find CSS snippets. And then you can simply press the little folder icon here, which is going to take you to the snippets folder inside your Obsidian directory. If you're wondering where this is actually located in your file system, you can find it by going to the folder where your vault lives, which for me is inside my Synology drive. Once you get to the folder where your vault lives, if you're on a Mac, just press Command Shift period, and it's going to show you the hidden files. The most important of these is the .obsidian folder, which you can find right here. This is where you can find your plugin's config files as well as your themes. And then over here, there's also the snippets folder, which is where we're going to put our dashboard code. So now we need to pull the CSS code from this project's repo, and you can find a link to it in the description below. Once you're there, just go to .obsidian, snippets, and you can find it here, dashboard.css. And as you can see, this file was updated just 12 hours ago. And this is because a recent data view update caused a CSS conflict with Dashboard++. I spoke with the developer and he pushed an update right away. So I'm going to go into dashboard.css and we're going to copy and paste all of this into a text editor. I'm going to use VS Code, but if you're on a Mac, you can use text edit. And if you're on Windows, you can use Notepad. So I'm going to grab all of this, come into VS Code, get a new file. And I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to save it as dashboard.css. Then format, I'm going to leave it as CSS. And I'm going to save it to desktop. We can then drag and drop it into that snippets folder. So I'm going to save it to desktop. And then I'm going to drag and drop it into our snippets folder. So now if we go back to our Obsidian Vault and we come back into Settings, Appearance, you can see that we have Dashboard right here under CSS Snippets. So you can go ahead and enable it. So that's our first step done. And now we need to create a page where our dashboard is going to live. I'm going to create a new page here in my vault. And I'm just going to call it Home. I'm going to press Command N for New Page. I'm just going to call it Home. I'm then going to create a YAML header and just add CSS class colon Dashboard. This is simply telling Obsidian to pull the CSS snippet called Dashboard and apply it to this page. If you want to know more about YAML, I have a short five minute video on it that I'm going to link to somewhere here on the screen. But now we can't just go into preview mode as nothing will happen because the CSS has no text here to be applied to. We need to first give it some text and for that I'm going to come back here into the repo and I'm going to grab the Dashboard++ markdown file. I'm going to copy and paste all of this into our vault. And now we can go into preview mode by pressing Command E and we're going to see the results of the CSS snippet. There's one small change that we can make in the settings to make it look much better. So if you come here to settings and then editor, and then over here to readable line length, by default, this is turned on. But if we turn this off, our lines are going to expand to the side, which is going to look much better. Now, many people, myself included, don't want this to be disabled as that would disable it for all the pages in our vault. So to fix this, TFT hacker left a snippet in the repo that makes our dashboard use wide margin, even if readable line length is still enabled in the editor. So to get that CSS code, we need to come back here into the repo. We need to go again to .obsidian, snippets, and it's right here, dashboard-readlinelength.css. And we're going to do the same process as before, and we're going to add it to our snippets. So as you can see, I've just placed it here in the snippets folder. So now we can come back into our vault settings, and we can go to editor, and over here, readable line length, we can toggle this one back on. And now we can go back to settings, appearance, and then simply enable this, and you're done. So let's now explore our dashboard and see how it works. So if I go into edit mode, you can see that it just consists of a header and then a list with sublists. So if you want to recreate this, you can just come here, put in a header, and then just add a list here with its own sublists. So now if you go into preview mode, you can see that it's working. And if you want to expand to the right, just create another list with sublists. There you go. All of these here are the same, but then over here is where we have some really cool things to add to our vault. And by default, the developer added some queries here, one for recent file updates, another for files tagged favorites, and then a couple here for some vault statistics. This is all made using DataViewJS, which is out of the scope of this video, but it's a video I have on my list. If we go into preview mode, you can see the queries here. If you're not seeing the results of these queries in your own vault, that's because you need to have not only DataView installed, but then you need to come here to DataView settings, and you need to enable JavaScript queries as well as inline JavaScript queries. Once you've enabled those, you can just come back into your homepage and you refresh the page and you should see them right here. All right, so let's now look at these queries here under Vault Info. 
and let's start with the recent file update. So if you go into edit mode, we can see the query for recent file updates. And this tells us the last four items that we change in our vault for easy access. So in this case, we have the home page, which is the one we're on, untitled database, the girl on the train and shallows. So if I click on any note here, such as atomic habits, and I type something here, and then I go back, you can see it now shows that note, atomic habits under recent file updates. So if you take a look again at the query, we have a query here to return us pages. And in here, we see that this is empty and that's because it's searching our whole vault. And then we have a sort by file time in descending order, which just means that the most recent note will be shown on top. And then we have here a limit of four. So if you want this to show more than four notes or less, just change this number here. So for instance, I can come here and put in 10. And when I go into preview mode, we now have 10 notes here. I can also change this into something like A2, and now we have only two notes here. So you can choose whichever one makes the most sense to you. If you want this to search for the most recent files in say a folder, you can just use an example here such as movies. And in here you just put in movies. And now when I go into preview mode, it's just telling me the most recent ones that we looked at in the movies folder. So again, if I come here into movies and let's choose one that's not here such as Dune, and then in here I make anything, and I come back, Dune is gonna be on top. We can also use other parameters such as tags. So in here, I can just change this and let's choose a tag. Let's choose weekly review since we have 17 of them. And now if we go on preview mode, you can see that we have the four most recent weekly review notes. And just to make sure that this works, we can come here into our tags and choose one that's not here, such as week 23, make a note here, and then go back. And now week 23 is on top. So now let's put this back as it was by leaving this here as blank. So it shows the last four notes in our vault. So then moving on, we have a query here for favorites. And this is simply pulling a list of your notes with the tag favorite. So then if I come here and I choose a random note and I place a tag favorite, then when I go back into our page and I go into preview mode, we're going to see Gone Girl in this case as a favorite. This is useful for easy access to files that you're actively working on. If I find myself accessing a couple files all the time, I just tag them with favorites and access them here. If you want to use this one, but with another tag, you just come here into edit mode and specify which tag right here, and then it's going to render accordingly. And then over here, these two are just queries to count pages inside different parameters. So this one here is counting all pages in our vault, and we know that because this value is empty. And then in here, this one's counting all pages inside family slash recipes. So if we want to take this and add another query here, such as one that's counting all of our weekly journal entries, we can just come here and let's add one for weekly journal entries. And then we can just copy and paste this. And then let's go here and we can see we have a journal and we have weekly. So in this case, we can just put journal here and then weekly here. So now if we go into preview mode, you can see we have 11 weekly journal entries. Like I said before, I have a video coming on this topic where we're gonna explore plenty of cool things that we can do with DataViewJS. All right, so now there's a few things that we can add that I really enjoy, and the first is to add the banner to our page. And this is done using a plugin called Banners. So to do that, we're gonna come here into Community Plugins, Browse, type in Banners, Install, and Enable. And now we need an image. And for that, I'm gonna come here to unsplash.com. Unsplash, for those that don't know, is just a nice place to find copyright-free images. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna type Landscape, and I'm gonna choose this one here, I'm gonna download. Then I'm gonna come back to Obsidian and I'm gonna create a page called Banners and I'm gonna drag and drop that image in here. Now I'm gonna come back to our homepage and I'm gonna press Command P of Command Palette, type in Banners, and then I'm gonna press Add Change Banner with Local Image. And as you can see our banners right there, once you press it, it's here in our dashboard. And the plugin automatically added here a banner YAML header and if you drag and drop this, you can adjust it to whatever you like. And as you move it around, you can see that this value here changes. And because I have a big screen, I want the banner to take up more space. And for that, I can just come here into the banners plugin settings and you can change the banner height to whatever value you want. For me, I like it at 500. So now if we come back to our homepage and go into preview mode, it already looks much better. All right, so next up, I wanna go over the perfect complement to your dashboard, which is the homepage plugin. What this plugin does is that every time you open up Obsidian, it's gonna to default to your homepage. So let's add that here by coming into community plugins, browse, Homepage, install, and then enable. And then we can click on options. And then in here, we simply tell it which page is our homepage. We called ours home. So I'm gonna type in home and it's the second one. Then over here for homepage view, I set it to reading view. And then if you're using any data view queries, make sure to toggle this one on. And now to test this, we can come here into another page such as James Clear. 
And now I'm going to quit Obsidian, not just close it. And now I'm going to open it up again. And as you can see, it opened up in our homepage. We can take it one step further and assign a hotkey to take us to our homepage. So if you come here to settings and then hotkeys, and here we search for homepage. And I like to assign a command H, H for home screen. And then no matter where we are in our vault, we can press command H and it's going to take us into our dashboard. If you want to continue automating different parts of your vault, then you can check out this playlist right here. This is where I go over a bunch of different automations I've done using DataView. Thanks TFT Hacker for creating this snippet for all of us to use. And thanks to all of you for watching. Have a great one. Bye.